I switched my entire project Hollow Runes from Unity to Unreal Engine 5. Why you may ask? Well, all that will be explained and more, so let's jump in and find out. Hey y'all, Kumo here, back with another devlog, again, finally. So I know what you're thinking. Kumo, you've already done so much in Unity for Hollow Runes, and now you're just up and abandoning Unity? Well, don't fret, my dear friends. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly the reasoning behind this change and why it's so important for the growth of Hollow Runes. So let's go. So to kick things off, I'll be quickly talking about my reasons for switching engines. And yes, I'm very aware of the recent Unity controversy, but I actually made the switch a month prior, so I consider that a happy accident. So first up would be performance. In the realm of game development, optimizing performance is crucial. As the sole developer of Hollow Runes, I faced challenges in Unity as the complexity of the game increased. Enter Nanite. And if you've never heard of Nanite before, it's an absolute game changer. Long gone are the days of LODs, and if you watched my previous devlog, you'll see just how cumbersome setting them up can actually be. So by using something like Nanite, which can automatically change the pixel count depending on the distance, I can focus more attention on different aspects of the game. Sick, right? So all in all, once I discovered that Unreal could offer a significant performance boost, it just made sense. Next up we have size and scope. Hollow Runes, as envisioned, required a scalable engine capable of handling expansive landscapes and intricate details without compromising performance. The engine's ability to seamlessly handle large-scale environments made it the perfect fit, allowing me to enhance the overall player experience by creating a more expansive and immersive game world. And yes, I am very aware of the ever-looming presence of scope creep, so just know that I'm keeping that in mind moving forward. And reason 3, personal preference. In any creative endeavor, personal preference plays a significant role. Unreal's visual scripting system blueprints, which I'll talk about later, resonated a lot more closely with my development style compared to Unity's. The enhanced graphical capabilities and a robust community support network really further solidified my decision. And I'm really just going to go on a limb and say that the transition to Unreal Engine marked an exciting step forward in the development journey of Hollow Runes. So I'm excited to take you guys on that journey too. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper into the essence of this project. As I embarked on sculpting the game world within Unreal Engine, a pivotal step to this journey was laying the groundwork with a master material, which was a completely new experience for me coming from Unity. This master material takes into account height data, so I can seamlessly create environments without needing to hand-pick textures for every single mountain range or small divot in the landscape. What I particularly like about this system is that it allows me to create diverse landscapes while taking a lot of the tedium out of texture painting. Now, I will say that I don't like to have everything be procedural, and 80% of the time I'm still going to be handcrafting this world, but laying the groundwork for a system like this really does help, especially in the long term. This isn't merely about aesthetics, it's about establishing a dynamic foundation. A cornerstone for consistency and adaptability. Think of the master material as an architect's blueprint. It's not just a mere stroke of a visual paintbrush, it's a very deliberate choice to ensure cohesion across the diverse landscapes within Hollow Runes. Adjusting parameters within this master material isn't just a creative liberty, it's a necessity. I'm able to take a test environment of the Crimson Grasslands, and just by adjusting a few parameters, I'm able to create something like this. So it's really rad to set up all this prior to really delving into the project and then being able to have much more control over what you're trying to create. Let's move on to importing assets and tweaking materials. But before I do, if you enjoy my content, subscribe and leave a like. It really helps to push my content to others and if you already did, then thanks again. You're the best. It was time to transition into the meticulous process of asset migration from Unity to the Unreal Realm. Importing assets wasn't just a copy and paste affair, it was a detailed procedure akin to adapting to a new environment. Each asset that I created for Unity kind of carries its own history, and my task was to seamlessly integrate them into Unreal Engine 5. If you've been following along with my previous devlogs, you'll know that I created all the assets and code from scratch, and a big worry moving a project into an entirely new engine is what I could take with me. Fortunately, migrating all of my assets and textures was as easy as dragging and dropping them into my project though I had to leave all my old scripting behind. 
And here's where the tweaking came in, like tuning a well-loved instrument. The materials that worked efficiently in Unity needed a bit of refinement to align with Unreal's characteristics. It wasn't about betraying their origin, it was about adapting them to the new stage. So I delved into Unreal's material editor, adjusting, refining, and occasionally nudging these assets to blend in with the visual landscape of Hollow Runes. To delve into specifics, the trees, grass, and bushes. Each of these elements required its own identity. And much like the landscape, enter new master materials with an array of parameters waiting to be adjusted. The trees got a subtle shake, the grass swayed gently, and the bushes, well, you know, they're, they're fine. It was much more about breathing life into each asset, making them an integral opponent in the unfolding narrative. And speaking of nuances, let's shift focus to our favorite pal, Spirit. Walking, running, and now, brace yourself. Some goddamn cloud riding. Because who wouldn't want to soar through the clouds in a <clears throat> completely original way? But to do this, crafting clean and modular blueprints was the key. Structures, interfaces, components, it was like assembling a finely tuned mechanism, ensuring that spirit moved seamlessly through hollow runes. And as a little bonus, I tweaked the run animation as well. Not a major overhaul or anything, but it is the small details that make a difference, right? Now let's talk about some logic and modular blueprint design. So as I delved into the world of hollow runes, I learned all about the different blueprint types and how they contribute to the game's dynamic nature. I'd like you to think of Spirit's actor blueprint as a canvas, the stage where the magic unfolds, right? So let's explore key components that bring Spirit to life and quickly explain their functionality in hollow runes. So firstly, we need to talk about structures and interfaces. Structures are kind of like organizers. They tidy up the data and keep things in order. Interfaces, on the other hand, act as a shared language, ensuring smooth communication between different parts of the blueprint. This interconnectedness ensures a modular design, allowing for easy additions, removals, or modifications, and it really just empowers Spirit's evolution and the evolution of all of the blueprints that I'm going to be making from here on out. Imagine using a blueprint structure named enemy. Now the enemy structure would be to organize essential enemy data. This structure neatly compartmentalizes attributes like health, damage, their AI behavior, and it just provides a clear and organized system for each enemy type in hollow runes without having to make specific structures for every single enemy because every enemy has components like health, damage, and so on. And now consider interfaces in action. Let's say that we have a blueprint interface called interactable. This interface could define functions that make an object interactable, ensuring any blueprint that implements it can seamlessly interact within the game's interaction system. So again, like the enemy structure, except rather than creating data that can go into a blueprint, I'm able to create and call different functions that can be used in blueprints or components. So again, it's just another great way of encapsulating information without sticking it all into one blueprint. And speaking of which, components are the backbone, the cornerstone of this intricate system. They encapsulate specific functionalities, ensuring a clean and organized blueprint. Without them, the blueprint could very easily become a chaotic mess, making it challenging to maintain and understand. But by storing all the structures and interfaces into specific components and then adding them to a blueprint, you're making your project much more scalable and modular. Zooming in on a specific example, the player abilities component. This versatile piece is the core of Spirit's dynamic capabilities, holding not just stamina, but a variety of player abilities. It's like a toolkit that adds depth and richness to the gameplay experience. So think of all these as puzzle pieces becoming a part of Spirit's main blueprint. This modular approach ensures flexibility in design. Each component seamlessly fits into the whole, allowing for easy adjustments and additions. Consider how similar methods are applied to components like the health component. This foundational piece not only oversees Spirit's health, but can also be repurposed for other entities in the game, such as enemies. This modular approach ensures flexibility and reusability, making it a valuable asset in my game development toolkit. Each component, along with structures and interfaces, really contributes to the very essence of clean and intricate data management in Hollow Runes, ensuring that I can maintain a creative flow state with minimal resistance. And just like that, we successfully switched Hollow Runes from Unity to Unreal with some additions along the way. We explored the advantages Unreal will bring to the project, the versatility, but the versatility of master materials for landscapes and the modular design of Spirit and other blueprints moving forward. Keep an eye out for the next devlog where I'll be delving into more topics very soon. 
And as always, feel free to share what you'd like to see next in the comment section or by jumping into the Discord and saying hello. But for now, I've been Kumo, and as always, cheers. Oh boy, do I have a lot to show you. God damn it. I'm just gonna leave it down. I'm just gonna leave it down. It doesn't wanna, it doesn't wanna stay up. It doesn't wanna stay up.